Ishmael, Shalom Israel, Shalom, Shalom. This is Brother Yishmael with WFI Atlanta. Um, first and foremost, of course, as always, we got to give all praises, honor, and glory unto the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world calls Jesus Christ. We know Him as Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, the Lord and Savior to the nation of Israel. I want to bid a strong Shalom unto all you mighty brothers mighty sisters, and mighty children that are keeping the law, statutes, and commandments to the Most High God, as well as the faith of our Lord and Savior, Hamashiach Yahweh in these last days. And during all things for the elect's sake, you fasting, praying, repenting, getting your household in order, abiding by the law, statutes, and commandments, abiding by righteousness, abiding by faith, right, and doing all that you can to make your calling and election short. Right, today we're going to get into a video dealing with free will, predestination, and understanding which is biblical. Right, I'm going to say that one more time. We're going to deal with free will, predestination, and which of the two are biblical. Right, so first and foremost, right before um, we get deep into the lesson, I want to kick it off with Psalms, the 119th chapter. All right, let's go to Psalms. Chapter 119 and 104. Let's get this quick precept, quick opening precept real quick, right, to set the foundation. The Lord said in Psalms chapter 119 and verse 104, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. So the only way that you can get the understanding through the Bible or of the Bible, I should say, all right. Outside of keeping the law, statutes and commandments, which you must do in order to receive the understanding of the scriptures is through thy precepts. So you must go precept upon precept in order to get the understanding of the Bible. All right. As I always like to tell, you know, brothers and sisters that are just coming into this truth, when you're dealing with uh, different verses throughout different bro books, uh, throughout different testaments, so-called. Right, when you're dealing with these things, right, when you're dealing with the Bible in its totality, that each verse within the Bible can be looked at as a puzzle piece. Now, when you put all the puzzle pieces in its correct position, linking it up with other puzzle pieces that fit properly, right, when you do these things through the Spirit, right, when you put all the puzzle pieces together, then what are you left with? You're left with the entire image or the entire picture, right, that is uh, meant to be conveyed. Right. Likewise, with the scriptures, when you take this verse uh, in the book of Isaiah, the third chapter, and you link it up with uh, the book of Malachi, chapter one. Right. And these things link up perfectly. Then you take certain precepts in the book of Genesis and you link it up with the book of Revelation, the first chapter. Right. Then you'll see that these things go hand in hand. Likewise, with this uh, with the Bible, man. Right. You got to understand, right, that you must go precept upon precept. Right. So the, uh, I bring that out to say, um, you know, you got a lot of individuals, you know, you may be coming from the Christian church. You may be coming from other uh, different sect and uh, religions, so-called. Right. And uh, they all may teach you um, and, and put that 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 weight on your shoulder to believe that everything that you do. Right. You have uh, the, the total right. And you essentially have power over the Most High God in your decision making, which we understand is uh, not to be true. Right. The Lord said, let's get this other precept, this Proverbs 20 and verse 12. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even both of them. You see that? So you having ears to hear, you having eyes to see, that is even uh, determined and preordained. By Yahweh, by Shemi, I was shy. If you're able to even um, receive the understanding, uh, whether on a physical or on a spiritual level, right? These things are controlled by the Lord, right? So nonetheless, we're going to get into it, right? We're going to stay right here in the same book of Proverbs, the 20th chapter, right? We're going to go to the 24th verse, right? It's free will or predestination in the Bible or which is biblical, right? That's what we're going to deal with. Salaki, bear with me. <clears throat> right so let's deal with it it's the book of proverbs chapter 20 and verse 24 right <clears throat> the lord said man's goings 
are a fool. Are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Right? The Lord said that man's goings are of the Lord. You waking up at 630, right? You being downstairs at 633, opening a microwave, putting your oatmeal bowl in so that you can uh, go back upstairs, get ready for work, right? You you put, you put defrosted your car. You make sure that all was in order. You doing these things. All these things are of the Lord. He's the one ordering your steps. He's the one making sure all these things are coming to fruition. He's the one controlling your path, man. Right? <coughs> Salakia. Right? So all these things are of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Right? The Lord said also, how can a man then understand his own way? Because man is faulty. Right? If it was up to you, man, you would destroy yourself. Right? Truth be told, if it was up to me, if it was up to the next brother, the next sister, right? If the Lord left it totally up to you, man, you would destroy yourself. You wouldn't know what to do. You wouldn't know where to go. You wouldn't know who to see. You wouldn't know what to say. Right? The Lord said in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, let's get this precept real quick. In the book of Wisdom of Solomon, right? The ninth chapter. All right? Let's get this precept. Bear with me. <coughs> the Lord said in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, and verse 14, For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable in our devices, but uncertain. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul, and the earthly tabernacle weigh down the mind that museth upon many things. So the Lord said in the book of Proverbs 20 and 24, how can a man then understand his own way? The Lord just told you that you're trapped in a body that is weighing down on your mind constantly. Every day that you wake up upon this earth, your mind is being weighed down upon every single day. The Lord said in verse 16, and hardly. Let's highlight this. And hardly do we guess aright at the things that are upon earth, man. That's how far gone man is. Right? So, you know, you got individuals upon the earth that say, you know what? You have free will. You have total power and control over what it is that you want to do, where it is that you want to go. And you ultimately can determine your faith or your fate, I should say. Salakia. All right? You got some individuals, I remember chopping it up with certain Christians um, back in the day, you know, uh, going over the word. And I had this one individual tell me that you uh, basically have power over the most high God. If he says he wants you to go right and he's going to make you go right, that you have power and uh, the free will to go left, you know. You have individuals that truly believe that you have power over the creator of all things. The Lord said it's not so. Right? The Lord said, in fact, that you hardly guess a right at the things upon the earth. Man doesn't even know if he wants strawberry oatmeal or if he wants blueberry oatmeal. And it's a conflict for you. And sometimes you can't choose. You don't know if you want this for dinner or if you want that for dinner. You don't know if you want to take a nap or go to, go uh, read the scriptures. You don't even know, man, if, if you, you, Jake, man, Jake's mind is so far gone. If we truly understood our own ways, man, we would be left unto destruction. Why? Because man's mind is finished. We heart that. Hey, and hey, that's not me saying that. That's what the scriptures say. The scriptures say we hardly guess a right. right? Our minds are, are, are wicked. Right, the Lord said, let's get this precept in the book of Jeremiah. Let's get the classic. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17. All right. It's the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. The Lord said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Right, but the main point, the heart. 
Now, your heart in the scriptures, that's your mind. All right? Your heart is your mind. Now, this world, they'll try to separate the two and differentiate and say, well, don't, don't think with your mind. Think with your heart. You thinking with the same thing. Your heart is your mind. Right? And the Lord said that your heart is deceitful above all things. It's wicked. Right? Who can know it? So why would why do mortal men trust in their own heart? There's a reason why the Lord said in Proverbs 3 and 5 to lean not unto your own understanding. But instead, of course, in verse 6, to acknowledge the Lord in all your ways, roughly paraphrasing. There's a reason why the Most High God, through His only begotten Son, Hamashiach, Yahawashai, would say such things. Right? Because your mind is so far gone. Let's get another precept. <coughs> Alright? Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse 11. Let's bring this up. The Lord said, He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that the Most High maketh from the beginning to the end. You see that? The scriptures say, also, he has set the world in their heart. So the only thing that you can really uh, truly uh, obtain or understand are the things that are that are found within this world. There's certain knowledge that is way too high for you. There's certain understanding that is way too high for you to understand. And there's a reason for that. The Lord has only appointed unto man a certain uh, uh, grip or a certain, um, uh, um, yeah, a certain grip of understanding that you can obtain, that you can hold. There be things found within the scriptures that are even too high for us to understand. Right? So the Lord, he set the world in your heart, which means also on another fold, you know, the illusion of you having free will, the illusion of you being able to go forth in the world and make whatever decisions that you want to make, the illusion to pick between righteousness and wickedness, the illusion to do that which is right in the sight of the Lord or to act perversely, the illusion to be in this truth. You know, uh, uh, and choose the Lord when we know, according to the precepts, that the Lord uh, chiefly he chose you. You have the illusion of decision making. Why? Because the world is set within your heart. And the Lord would do such things like this for a reason. Right. And it says it right here. So that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Because if you have the same understanding as the Most High God, you will buck up against the Lord. Right? That's the whole reason why our forefathers and our foremothers got caught up in the first place. Because they wanted to be as the gods, knowing what? Knowing both good and evil. When it was never intended for them to know good and evil. The Lord set man up to be immortal. To only know that which is good. But man, through the wickedness and the craftiness of his heart and the deceitfulness of his heart, sought out those things which were not right for him. All right. So the most high, he, he does these things for a reason. There's a reason why, you know, nobody can contend with the most high. There's a reason why nobody can counsel the Lord. There's a reason for these things. Right. The Lord, he man, if you knew exactly how you was going to die. If you knew exactly when you was going to come into this truth, hey, brother, if you knew that you was one of the 144,000 right now, you would bug the hell out your mind. You would act up. You would turn up. Right. Man would do all types of wickedness and perverseness. Why? Because his heart is not right. So, man, you're so far gone right now. Right. Nonetheless, the Lord is the one that is directing all things. Let's go back to the book of Proverbs, chapter 16. Right? It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse number 9. 
The Lord said, a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. So it's Yahweh by Shem Yahushai that is directing your steps. Every single step that you take throughout the day, it is being directed by the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Every single one. Again, from the moment that you step foot out of your bed to the moment that you return unto your bed, every step that you take throughout the day, everything that you do, every word that you say, every thought that's come forth out of your heart, every single thing cometh from Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. All right. And when you come into the truth, this is a concept that you have to become very familiar with. You have to understand that your ways are not your ways. You have to understand that your words are not your words. Right. And that ultimately comes back uh, upon your shoulders. And it makes you understand as a mortal man and a mortal woman that you have to give power and strength back unto your creator. Because on a deeper level, these other religions these other uh, uh, ideologies and philosophies, right? They traded, They tried to make man and woman see themselves as gods, right? Your own creator, right? The universe and the world revolves around you. The scriptures say not so, right? There is a power. There is an entity that is much stronger, uh, that, that controls all things, uh, that, that can do such things that we couldn't even do with our own hands. So coming into the truth, you truly have to submit unto the works, unto the guidance, unto the direction in which Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is guiding you in. Because you're doing nothing of yourself. Right? The words that are even coming out of my mouth at this current moment is from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, let's get another precept. Let's go to the book of Job. It's Job chapter 33 and verse 14. The Lord said, For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Again, because man is faulty. Man is so far gone. Man, you're not going to be able to perceive the words of the Lord when he's, when he's, when he's speaking to you. Or when he has the men of the Lord standing in front of you trying to pull you into this truth. Man isn't going to perceive the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that is too high for him. Right? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, you have what some will call a spiritual man. Then you have some that uh, the Lord is called natural men. Right? A natural man cannot perceive those things which are of the spiritual. But again, that is all determined by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Remember, we read the precept in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 12. That the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath created both of them. Now we all have eyes, we all have ears, but the hearing ear, the seeing eye, on a twofold level, you know, that can be uh, pertaining unto the spirit. That's why you'll have the Lord telling you, um, he that hath an ear, let him hear. You know, or whoso understandeth, let him understand. Because the Most High, He speaketh once. He speaketh twice. But guess what? Man is too far gone. Man does not perceive it. Right? Let's read on. Verse number 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then He openeth the ears of men, and seal if their instruction. You see that? So while you sleep, down snoring, got drool coming out your mouth, you staying in your pillows. While you're doing these things, the Lord is tapping into your mind through his angels and sealing your instruction. It wasn't of my will that I was going to be doing this video. It wasn't of my will that you decided that you were going to go to the grocery store today. It wasn't of your will that you decided to make whatever it is that you made for dinner. 
It wasn't of your will to, for any of these things. The Lord, he taps into your mind while you sleep, right? And seals your instruction for that day that's soon to come, right? Or the next day after that, or the next day after that, right? The Lord is the one controlling all things. And if you need me to say it, you do not have free will. Free will is not a biblical concept. Let's read on. <coughs> right? Forgive me. Verse number 17. It reads, That he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Again, because if it was all up unto you, Jake, Eve, you would destroy yourself. Right? You got to remember that you're trapped within a body that's sold to sin, given unto vanity, subject unto vanity. Right? That's Romans 8 and verse 20. Right? The Lord, he withdraws you from your purpose, man. You may say, you know what? I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And the Lord will say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, you're not. You do X, Y, and Z, you're going to kill yourself. Now, these conversations aren't going to be done right in front of you, right? But rather, the Lord is simply going to tap into your mind, seal the instruction that's actually going to come to pass, and then it comes to pass, and you perform those such things which the Lord set up for you to perform, right? The Lord hides you from your purpose. How many times have you, uh, the night prior, said that you was going to do X, Y, and Z tomorrow, then tomorrow comes around and you don't do none of X, Y, and Z. Everything that you said that you was going to do, you didn't even do it. But you ended up doing something completely different. Those things happen because why? Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, he's the one that is controlling, that is maintaining, that is uh, 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 directing and guiding you in all things in which you do. Let's read on. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. You see that? So again, if, it, if, if all power was left unto you, you would be destroyed. That's what it means when it says it's keeping back his soul from the pit. The Lord is keeping you from being destroyed, from being put to death. And that's mercy from Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. Because he's the one guiding you. You know, now, you know, when the Lord gives you over to your lust, you know, gives you over to those things with your heart desire, you know, that's when you need to worry because the Lord, he's not directing you away from the pit. You want to go to the pit so bad, go to the pit. That's how, that's how the Lord views it, man. You want to do wickedness so bad, go ahead. Do wickedly. And guess what? The wages of sin is death. You're going to end up getting put to death. So you got to understand that. Right? Because again, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, he's the one that's controlling all things. Right? Let's go to Psalm chapter 16. Right? It's Psalm chapter 16 and verse number 5. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. You see that? So, yeah, how about Shemi Shah? He's the one that maintains your lot. All right. Now, some may say, well, what is your lot? All right. What is your lot going into? All right. Let's deal with it. Your lot, when you go into the Hebrew, is dealing with. Your portion. Right? Let's listen to this. Strong's H, 1486. Goral. Goral. All right? Strong's um, H, 1486. Goral. 
right? The Lord said this word lot is going into the portion. You see this? Look, look check this out. It says thing assigned, right? So you have certain things within this truth that are assigned unto you. Everything is weighed in the balance. From the moment that you came into this truth, from the moment that you found out that you was of the tribe of Judah, the moment that you learned your first precept, the moment you got in that car accident, the moment you, you down switched up your hair, everything is weighed in the balance. Everything. Right? Let's let's get that precept in the book of Second Edges. The Lord, He gives you your portion. The Lord, he maintains your life. That's biblical. Right? Let's go to uh, 2nd Edges chapter 4 and verse number 36. All right? It's 2nd Edges chapter 4 and verse number 36. And unto these things, Uriel the archangel gave them answer and said, even when the number of seeds is filled in you, for what? For he, right, check this out, for he hath weighed the world in the balance. So everything found within this world is weighed in the balance. The prophecies, sin. When you read the book of uh, Revelation chapter 18, it'll tell you for her sins have reached unto heavens. Right? Because even Babylon the Great has a certain number of sin, has a certain number of iniquity that must be fulfilled in order for certain prophecies to kick off, in order for certain things to come forth, right? From 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 you uh, uh, stepping out, you know, ha having your child, from, you, from the moment that you met your rib, the moment that you met your husband, everything has been weighed in the balance. There is a spiritual clock Above all things. From the moment you got fired to the job. From your job. To the moment you find your next job. All these things are set up and controlled. By Yahweh by Shem Shah. Right. The Lord he even knew you in the womb. Let's go to that. I believe that's Psalms. Right. I believe that's Psalms. Um, I want to say might be, uh, 137, Salakia. All right. Typed in the wrong thing. All right. Salakia. The Psalms, um, let's, let's go over two chapters. Believe it might be Psalms 139. All right. Verse 15. Con. Right? This Psalms chapter 139. I'll start at uh verse 14. Alright. Actually, we're gonna get straight to the point. This Psalms 139 and verse 15. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret. Now, what is this going into? This is going into you being fashioned in the womb. You being uh, uh, created and all your members being put together within your womb. Right? And curiously, wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. Now, how were you unperfect in the womb? Because all your members wasn't fashioned. All, you didn't have your arms as soon as that as soon as at the moment you were conceived. Right? All these things had to be uh uh, uh nurtured and, and created slowly but surely over the process of time. Yet the Lord said his eyes did see you while we, while you were unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were written. Which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. You see that? All your members was written, man. The Lord has everything set up in order. The Lord has everything weighed in the balance. How tall you was going to be. 
how long your arms was, right? You have uh, Esau talking about your body mass index. All that, man, is already rigged. The Lord knew all these things, right? The Lord knew all these things, man. Right? And they were already preordained. Or in other words, they were already predestined. So if you need me to say it clearly, predestination is in the Bible, right? Predestination is in the Bible. Even when it comes down to the hairs upon your head, the Lord already knows these things. You think the Lord is just scratching his head? Say, oh my goodness, he grew another strand. How many is that now? Then he has to go to his, 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 uh, his to the drawing board. Say, okay, let's let's add another. He grew another hair follicle. La ah, the Lord knows all these things already, ma. Right? Let's read this. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. And it was already preordained and predestined from old. How many you would have? That's how they're already numbered, man. Because everything is already set up and preordained from old. The Most High has literally wrote these things out. As I like to say, the Most High's master plan. And this is the Heavenly Father we're talking about. We got some brothers scratching their head listening to the video, don't know what's going on. Because you're trying to put yourself, you're trying to comprehend the works of the Heavenly Father. And you'll never be able to do so. Right? But if you needed a reminder, predestination is indeed biblical. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Let's get a couple more precepts to wind down. Right? It's the book of Ephesians, chapter 1 and verse 4. The Lord said, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So even before the foundations of the world were created, before, you know, you had the, uh, the sun, moon, and the stars, before you had the firmament dividing the waters from the waters, before you had the creeping, ca crawling things, and the things that should inhabit the air, right, the earth, the waters, right, before you had all these things created, the Lord has uh, set up and chosen a certain amount of spirits from the beginning to be in this truth, right? To be saved, to be elected from the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Let's read verse five. Having predestinated. Brothers, the whole video was saying, well, I'm, I'm still not convinced. That's why you got to go precept upon precept. Right? Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai HaMashiach to himself, according to the good. <coughs> forgive me. According to the good pleasure of his will. You see that? Having predestinated us. So if you're in this truth right now, if this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding has finally made itself manifest unto you, then guess what? The Lord predestinated that to happen. The Lord chose you from the foundations of the world before they, all things were created, before Apple and AirPods, before the internet, Right before Amazon, before all these things, before the Eiffel Tower, the Lord predestinated you to come into this truth, to call yourself an Israelite, to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, and do those things which are pleasing in His sight. The Lord is the one that has predestinated you to do such things. This is all the works of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. Right? Let's go to John chapter 6. Let's get another precept to prove it. All right. It's the book of John, chapter 6, and verse number 64. 
but there are some of you that believe not. So while we have individuals that were chosen from the foundations of the world to believe on Hamashiach Yahweh to be walking in this truth, to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, to keep the faith and endure unto the end, the Lord said, but there are some of you that believe not. For Yahweh Shai knew from the beginning. Now, how would Yahweh Shai know from the beginning if it was not already preordained? If it was not already written of old? For Yahweh Shai knew from the beginning who they were that believed not. So while, again, you have individuals that have been chosen and predestined to be within this truth in these last days, you also have individuals on the left-hand side that truly do not believe, right? And who should betray him, right? Now, that's going into uh, uh, Judas, right? Judas Iscariot, right? The Lord already knew. It wasn't a surprise when Judas Iscariot um, betrayed uh, betrayed him It wasn't a surprise Cause it was already predestined man It was already predestined Right So again predestination Is definitely in the bible Right brothers have to understand that Right sisters have to come to grips with it You have no power Over you know the things that you do That's why that you gotta Pray to the most high That he direct you in the ways of righteousness, that he keep you upon a straight and narrow path, that you allow that uh that he allows you to acknowledge him in all your ways. Right? You have to pray unto the Lord that these things can be so. Right? Let's get this last precept that we close out. It's the book, right? Actually, I wanna um I wanna scroll down a little bit. Right. All right, bear with me. I want to get this precept. All right, let's get this precept in the book of Isaiah. I believe that's Isaiah chapter 55. And verse, uh, yep. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts, man. Even as the heavens are above the earth, so are the most high's ways above your ways. So brothers trying to comprehend the ways of the most high on the deepest of levels, it's not going to be able to uh, be done. It's not possible. You're dealing with the creator of all things. Right. So when it comes down to predestination, our brothers and sisters have to understand and accept and submit to the fact that Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, the heavenly father and his only begotten son, are the uh the only thing that is uh directing you and guiding you throughout your everyday lives. And for that, we have to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Right, Lord willing, this video was edifying. Lord willing, brothers and sisters continue to get built up. If brothers and sisters needed to be said plainly once more, free will, predestination, which is biblical, right? Through the precepts, we now understand that predestination is indeed a biblical concept. While on the contrary, you do not have free will. Right? But again, Lord willing, I was edifying. Lord willing, brothers and sisters, continue to endure. Kwam Yasha Allah and Shalom.